Thank you very much for the special item. We do see you on the internet. Now we see you live. God bless you in your ministry. We now invite the, the nieces and the nephews to sing. We want to appreciate that when pastor introduced the church members, he introduced only a portion of his church. But also in this church, we have many members from other churches would like you to feel welcome. Members of Nairobi Central Church and all other churches around us, you're welcome. But I want to appreciate those elders who have worked with Elder, Elder uh, Professor Mochogi. Could you please stand up? Those elders who have worked with the Elder here and those deaconesses who have worked with Mama, please stand up. Please stand up so that we can appreciate you. Welcome. Elder Justice Posir, welcome all of us. This museum has been very great to us and the family, and we appreciate that we don't have the opportunity to recognize each one of you. May God bless you. Continue to serve with the museum as the Lord has saved his life. Thank you very much. Together with us, the rest I will say after.
Thank you. This is the church tomorrow, starting today. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for the parents for training these children to sing. I want to encourage you that we have a lot of space in front. We have a lot of space in front, and the our balcony is empty. Let's not squeeze too much. We have space at the front and on the balcony, the two sides. You can enter from the left or from the right. We have space at the top. We want to welcome and recognize those of us who have come, and I'll ask uh, Pastor Otuere to do that. Uh, we appreciate the program so far. We appreciate our children, our grandchildren, and uh, just for the sake of uh, recognizing the, some of us who have just come in, I want to recognize the presence of uh, my colleagues, two pastors who have just come in, Pastor Goga Douglas, wherever you are seated, please, where are you, Baba? You can say hi, please. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, uh, Pastor is a part of also the family, uh, is a friend to the family, let me say that. Uh, I have also with me uh, Dr. Timothy Guto. Pastor Guto, please, wherever you are seated, I saw you. Because I know you are tall like me. When you are walking in, I saw you coming in. Pastor Guto, where are you? Timothy, or he has walked out. He was inside here. Okay, fine. We shall, uh, if he's not there, then, uh, but he was in. Okay. Uh, finally, I want to recognize uh, our leadership uh, in the political forums. You know, by extension, uh, we say that uh, all uh, leadership is ordained by God. So we want to uh, recognize the presence of uh, the governor, deputy the governor from Kisi County, brother Dr. Monda. I know you are seated with your spouse. Can you say hi, please, if you don't mind? We want to pray for you that the same God who has seen you through life 
this far is still with you. To the wife and children, we place you before our Creator and the giver of life. That even when your husband, your father, is not with us, is no more with you, God will stand in and provide for you. To the brothers, sisters-in-law, the nieces and nephews, uncles and all the relatives here, aunties, we know Professor lost his wife, Mama Yunuke, not long ago. And as Professor mourned the wife, the firstborn son follows the mother. Our prayer is that God stands with you. It is painful in all human terms, but let God be with you. And so on behalf of the governor of Kisi County, whom I expect to come either here or in the field, wherever we are going, and, on, and the people of Kisi County, we stand with you, Professor, and the entire family. And may God help you. Thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, Sante Sana, our brother, Daktari. Uh, this is the second time Daktari is joining us. About two weeks ago, they were with us at uh, the home of uh, Professor Mochoge with the governor, Brother Simba Arati. We appreciate you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, finally, uh, I know that uh, we are still coming, but uh, we still have the second service that will be conducted uh, at the inspectorate uh, venue, Dagoretti Corner. So don't be under pressure that uh, maybe you, will, you need to be recognized. We shall have more time. And if you are spared your day to be with us, please bear with us. So may the good Lord bless us as we continue with the program. Thank you. Please bear with us because of time. We may not have time Intentionally, it was meant that we'll have worship, then we'll have a separate area where we'll speak. We now want to invite the uh, children again to come and give short tributes. And these are the four. We have Daniel, we have Edward, and we have Marty, uh, Maureen Vega, that's our daughter, and then we have Michelle and Tiffany. Please come in that order. We encourage you to make it short. Martin, yours was okay, but we would like them to keep it shorter. God bless you. Please come in that order. It's uh, I'm privileged to be before you. Normally, I'm not a good public speaker. And uh, since I was young, I remember being told one thing by my parents. They always told me, be like Sami. Yes, so be like Sami. Words have always been told from when I was young to date. Growing up was always compared to Sami. He was my big brother, and I 
always tried to emulate him. Sami excelled in all he did, from kindergarten in Germany to secondary school, Dagoretti. He was a born leader, and uh, basically everyone around him tried to emulate him, from me, my cousins, to the people in the estates where we grew up from when we were small. Anyone we talk to will tell you they'll, they tried to be like Sami. Sami, as you have heard, was a born leader. From nursery school, you'll find children going home and when they ask to do something at home by their parents, they will say no. Sami did not tell us that. So they will come and wonder, who is this Sami? Then they will find Sami is some black boy. This was in Germany. And they will wonder, how can a black boy try to rule our house? But the Sami was a born leader, and so even the kids in Germany, being white, they tried to be like Sami. Sami always had a smile, and for all who knew him, there was a space somewhere in his smile. This smile of his was very infectious to all who were around him, and uh, Everyone tried to be like him. He was always ready to help and ready to lend a hand. Sami loved life and he lived it to the fullest. Growing up, I have very fond of memories of being with Sami. And I always tried to copy him whatever he did, the good and also the bad. Sami, we have some good times with him. At one point, we were very good at shoplifting. A skill I perfected from Sami. He will steal something. If he didn't share with me, I'll go steal the same thing. But as they say, 40 days catches up with you. And on the 40th day, unfortunately, it was me who was caught, not Sami, <laughs> as he was very perfect in the things he did. That day was a very long day and night. We got a thorough whooping. We were beaten so badly that the news reached Kisi before we reached Kisi the following day. And mind you, that time there were no phones. But the news reached Kisi that we had done something wrong. And the uh, funny thing is, that's the last time we were beaten by both my dad and my mom. Sami being in Saturday 6, me being in Saturday 3. Unfortunately, from that time on, the bond that I had between me and Sami broke. As he could no longer confide in me. As I mean, I got caught and I had to say, my, I cannot be beaten alone. So I had to give up, you know, we share both the good and the bad. Yes. The bond was further widened when Sammy went to school. We went to secondary, I was in primary. By the time I was joining secondary, I also wanted to join Dagoretti like him, but I was unfortunately, I joined Highway, and he also told me it's not, it's not nice for me to go to Dagoretti, as Sami was also strict. And along the way, he had a few enemies in that school, being a leader. As you know, in any school, when you're a cop, there are some guys who want to revenge. So they told me it's not nice, watch I, I clear from that school, then you can join it. But unfortunately, I did not manage to join it. So Sami flew out the States and the gap widened. And uh, for me, basically, I could say that's the match I had interaction with Sami when he was in Kenya. The rest of the time, he just talked on the phone. Apart from one time, Sami came back to teach me how to drive in one of his visits to Kenya. 
funny thing, on the same day he told me to drive, is the day he also got his first accident. As uh, he's a speedster in everything, running and both driving. Sami, we wish we would have experienced more of you. The tributes that have been pouring in of your goodness, kindness, selflessness, your love for music and your love for God from family and friends shows how much you touched so many lives and transformed so many hearts. Uh, on 13th September, that day I had uh, talked to Sami earlier on, being in school, sometimes you're broke. Yeah, and he replied it, uh, we were texting on WhatsApp, and he replied, don't worry, I'll sort you out. Uh, let's get in touch in the evening when I, uh, I finish, I'm off work, and we'll see how we'll arrange to sort you out. Unfortunately, that same day is when I was called, missing a number from states, I was quite happy, thinking, ah, Sami is now out, going to deliver good news. Then I had Martin on the phone. Martin greeted me nicely before he broke the news that Sammy was no more. It was a difficult time for me. Martin was always Eddie. He said, Eddie is in the next room. He said, I've tried to reach him. He's not picking up. For me, it was a hard time. Because I was not able even to tell Eddie what had happened. So I took the phone, gave it to Eddie, and uh, yeah. The next thought of me was my dad, knowing before Sammy left for America, as Martin put it, Sammy was a favorite. And then Martin became the handbag later on. Yeah, but we tried, to, we had to rush to him before he got the news from anyone, knowing he's uh, also a bit vulnerable. Yeah, we managed to break the news and we're here today. Sami, you have run your race and finished strong. You lived a full life. Through the high and the low periods in your life, you never forgot your Lord. I cannot say goodbye. All I can say is rest till we meet you again on that bright and wonderful morning. Some of you shall be truly missed. Amen. Uh, good morning, church. Um, being the third born in the family, I actually got to spend time-wise about 13 years with my brother, um, most of which I was still a baby. So we didn't get to interact so much but the few times we interacted was worth the while as much as uh, our parents ensured we had Friday devotions and worship it was Sammy's uh, character that drew me even more closer to Christ um he was one of the few students at Lavington Primary School who, without being coerced by the parents, decided that he wasn't going to attend Saturday classes 
and that he will prove the management wrong that uh, attending Saturday classes uh, is not the key to pass examinations. And he managed to pass really well and uh, he was a testimony to other Seventh-day Adventists who are in that school that they didn't have to uh, succumb to the pressures of attending Saturday classes. And that was a testimony for me and I followed the same. In high school, Saturday was my day. At my workplace, I never work on Sabbath. Sabbath is a no-no for me. And it all began by the testimony from Sami. And uh, I'm forever grateful for that. It's been tough accepting that you are no longer with us, big brother. My heart is bleeding. I, st I still can't believe that uh, you're no longer with us. May God forgive my unbelief. You are uh, my confidant. I will go to Sami and tell him anything and everything uh, about my life. And he's the one who will uh, give me guidance. Um, he's come through for me severally. And he was a source of blessing and encouragement. And uh, when he came back to Kenya after a few years, one of my most enjoyous moments is uh, I had a personal singing session with him in the house. I love music, I love singing. And uh, we did uh, do it together. He touched me by the gaiters, and it came out well, and we came up and told each other that we should plan to sing one day. He told me to plan to come to America, but uh, so far I haven't been able to go to that land, but uh, I believe that uh, as he has finished his race, he's uh, fought his fight, he's finished his race, and uh, from the life that he has lived, I believe I'm going to meet him at the feet of Jesus and we'll sing together in the heavenly choir. Shalom, my brother, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Good morning. I've been told this is the land of speeches, so I've saved many of my words. Please bear with me. Words fall short to describe the man who gave me the greatest joys life can offer. Thank you. Our time together was too short, but deeply meaningful. We met at New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church in Dallas almost a year into the pandemic. I don't know where I'd had the idea to visit this church. George Orquero was greeting at the door that Saturday morning when I arrived. He politely welcomed me, but the look on his face told me how perplexed he was by me showing up there. Surely this lady must be lost. <laughs> Seeing this, I explained my little connection with the community from my time singing with the Minneapolis First Church Choir in Minnesota. And before I knew it, Elijah had me singing with the New Life Praise Team. I received the warmest welcome that day from friends like Louise, Karen, and Emily. If Sam were here, he would tell you that he saw us singing online and decided that he had to meet me. Well, he found a way, and we quickly knew that we were one for another. My life suddenly became busy with activity because Sam always had something to do and somewhere to go. Life with him was definitely an adventure. He drove like he was still in Kenya, but at Audubon speeds. I still remember the first time we sang together. He was excited to make his debut in Spanish. Sam was getting quite good at Spanish, you should know. 
but he was so nervous that it was hard not to tease him for the notable streaks of sweat and shiny face that he had through the entire song. We loved to spend time outdoors together. One time we went kayaking in Austin, Texas, and if you were there, you would have easily spotted us because we were the ones zigzagging down the river because we could not agree on whether it was the person seated in the front or in the rear who had to steer. When I was in labor for two days, he held my hand and encouraged me. When Abigail finally arrived, <laughs> he exclaimed, you did it, in a high-pitched voice that he only had when he was excited and trying to contain emotion. Sam quietly carried out acts of kindness because it was the right thing to do, because it was the example set forth by his parents, and because he considered himself a servant of God. He never sought to receive recognition. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, for your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Matthew 6, 3-4. These words have never been more true than Sam's living example. What he may have lacked in earthly possessions, he made up for in friendships. I wish I had the prose to dignify him with the words he deserves, but I encourage you to listen to the words of our dear friend, Leopoldo Vaughn, who eloquently captured last week the richness of Sam's legacy and life lessons, and I'm briefly going to share those with you. Number one, don't become victims of death, but students of the life lived. Two, and as much as we are products of our past, we should not be prisoners of it. Three, when you go through the furnace of fire, just remember that God's eye is on the clock and his hand is on the thermostat. Four, whatever you do, do it as if you're working for God and not for man. Five, never look down on anyone unless you're admiring their shoes. Six, laughter is like medicine. Find it in the things that make you laugh. And seven, don't postpone fellowship with those you love. Sam spent the last months of his life working hard for his family, furthering his education, volunteering his talents for Texas Youth Pathfinders and Master Guide, singing in any opportunity and celebrating the birth of our daughter. He had a whole life ahead of him with plans for a career in cybersecurity, plans to build homes in Kenya and Dallas and have more children together. He hoped to obtain a doctorate in mathematics and one day also be called professor. I'm heartbroken by Sam's loss, but grateful for the priceless gifts he left behind. Our baby girl, baby girl Abigail Magoma, a loving family, and countless friends. To Dad, Professor Mochoge, Danny, Eddie, and Martin. To the countless aunties, uncles, nieces, nephews, and close friends. To Tiffany, Michelle, and Gabby. Polesana, Guamasiba, Ulitu, Patat. I'm so deeply sorry for your loss. Thank you for welcoming me from the beginning and holding me through this time. In Gawa Sasa Hakuna Nejia Ya Kujasa Viatu Iva Mojoa Yanagusu Sa Familia Hi Vahamu Kwamba Nime Jitolea Kwa Family Hikama Sam Alivio Kua Kwangu Nahahiri Kua Kua Naji Kama Sam Alivio Ahiri Kua Nami Though there is now Though there is now 
There is no way to fill the shoes of one of the pillars of this family. Know that I am committed to this family as Sam was to me. I promise to be there for you as Sam promised to be there for me. To our friends back home who are watching up from around the world, thank you for your support in helping us get here. To my daughter, Abigail. It breaks my heart that you will not have your own memories of dad's laugh and contagious smile. He wanted to teach you tennis and to sing, help you with your math homework. Watch you become a pathfinder and take you camping. I know you will walk in the greatness of your father and Grandma Mamgoma. I wish Sam could see the outpouring of love and appreciation from all of you. And I hate to say goodbye. But not kupenda forever, mi amor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I will first thank everyone for actually showing up and supporting my family. Oh, let me breathe in a bit. My dad was more of a stage person. <laughs> I'm not really a stage character as he was. But from the number of people who have reached out to our family, it has actually shown how much my dad was loved and is still loved till now. And we will forever respect his memory and thank you so much again for coming here. I will not read the tribute that was on the program because everyone can read that at their own time. I'm gonna say a few words that I thought should be said and not written. It was such a privilege to be his first child. As most people know, the first child is usually the trial and error kid. But despite of all that, I think a few things were produced from the trials and errors that we went through. We had a few challenges, dis disagreements, and all that. But one thing I got out of him, from him was my love for math and the stubbornness, most of all. And... <laughs> We would actually argue, look at a light that is green and argue that it was either red or blue and still build our cases till we were both right. So that's how stubborn both of us were. Despite the challenges that we went through, my dad always told me to put on a strong front. And we held, I held him to, I held that promise to always be strong in the face of trouble. But this was the first challenge that actually proved my weakness. <laughs> For Abigail and Marlene, I, will, I can't say welcome because you're already part of the family. He told me from the moment that he met you about everything about you. So all I can say is that I'll always be by your side as much as, as I can. And I hope I will be able to teach Abby the good things that he taught me and some of the small tricks that he taught me through life. For my sister Tiffany and Gabby, I made a promise to dad always, even before I left America, 
that we, I will always respect and acknowledge you despite our troubles. And I will always uphold that issue despite we are sisters, we fight from time to time. And I'm sure when Abby grows, we'll have our small disagreements. And for the rest of the family, thank you so much. You have shown a strong front for all of us. And I, I know you'll be there for us as much as you can. Grandpa, this was your firstborn son. And I know it's not easy. I will try to be there for you as much as he was for you. I will put the I will show you the face he always of strength that he always showed you, Grandpa. Samuel Mochoge was a, pil a pillar of hope in the community, and I am glad he taught me how to be strong in any way. And he tried to show me how to be like him, but. No one can ever fit his shoes. We might have our, I might have my faults, but I will try my best to continue his legacy. And, and I will do my best to fulfill his wishes to my sisters, Tiffany, Gabby, and Abby. And Marlene, I promise I'll always be there for you, no matter what, I'm a call away. I will always and forever miss my dad, and I will, I will always respect the wishes that he had, including me finishing school in pharmacy and getting my doctorate. And as I said, he was a loved man, and I hope he will forever be loved in this world. Thank you so much. Um, hi, my name is Tiffany Makusu. Um, I was, I know it's going to be hard for some of you to understand me because I was born and raised in the United States, so my accent's a little thick, but hopefully um, you'll be able to understand me. I'm going to read some parts of I'm going to read some parts of my tribute because it's to my dad. And then um, I'm going to say something to my family as well. Um, my dad taught me many things. Yeah, okay, this is now to my dad. Um, you were there for me when life would get rough, and you taught me so much without knowing it. You taught me to never give up on my passions, despite what the devil may throw at me, and that it is never too late to continue what you started. You taught me that it's okay to start over again. You taught me that, or you taught me how to stand up and take accountability, even when it's hard. You taught me to forgive people who may do you wrong even without getting the apology you deserve. You taught me, or you tried to teach me how to cook ugali, but even though that failed, I learned that you can't be good at everything. You taught me how to fix things and how to protect myself. You taught me that music is just more than a form of art, but also a way of communication, especially, especially with Christ. You taught me how to accept others for who they are, and to always try and lend a helping hand. You taught me the importance of serving God and serving others, not for your own praise, but out of the kindness of your own heart and for the glory of God. You taught me how to be steadfast in my morals and to always do the right thing, but even when I do make mistakes and I fail, that I should dust myself off and learn from those lessons. You taught me how to be organized, how to keep track of things, how to always have a plan. 
You tell me that it's okay to have a competitive side and want to win, but it's okay to lose too. You tell me to be positive and always try to look on the bright side of things, to have a sense of humor and to always smile, no matter how big of a gap you may have in your teeth. And if you ever saw my dad, he had a pretty big gap. <laughs> you tell me that there's always room for dessert. Um, and you tell me that God should be my number one priority and everything else will fall into place. You loved all of your children. You were proud of all four of us. You loved to talk about Michelle and things that she was accomplishing and the determination that she had displayed. You cared about Gabby and everything she did concerned you. You sent me a picture of Abby within an hour that she was born and even though she kept you up at night, you loved hearing her voice. And just like you loved us, we loved you so much. We know that there is hope and we will continue to watch out for each other and keep your legacy strong. Throughout all of this, everyone has told my sisters and I to be strong, but it's okay to not be strong. It's okay to experience the emotions of loss at its fullness. We don't have to be strong because we can lean on each other and on Christ and give all of our sorrow to him. We can rest in our love for each other and in the love that our, God, our, that our dad had for us. I will miss you. I will miss your jokes and your loud laugh. I will miss the, the hour-long calls that we had in the words of wisdom, the advice, and the lessons that you would give me. It's hard to say goodbye, but it's hard to say goodbye, but I won't. I'll just say I'll see you later, and I love you. Thank you. God bless you. God has promised to be with you. He said in the book of Jeremiah 49, verse 11, that he will take care of the orphans and the, their lives preserved, and the widows to wait upon him and trust him. He's watching over you. He will take care of you as your dad, your dear husband has left, but the Lord stands to take care of you. We have many choirs who would have loved to sing. And we have to make this clear that we are here for the service of the family. We just do what they've asked us to do. It's taken a bit long, but bear with us that we are here to support them. And we thank you for being patient. As we move on, we're going to go into the special scriptural readings, and we have the participation of our children, our grandchildren, and it is short presentations, and they are prepared for it, and we will not like them to miss this opportunity. They will take part of this, and after they do, we should have a special presentation from King's Messengers, where Sami was one of the founder members. And then we'll have special song by the youth choir. The young choir when Sami was young. Now they are not young, but they want to remember Sami as they started this program. Now let's quietly wait upon our children as the leaders in the scripture readings which are listed. God bless you. Today's scripture reading is from John 11, verses 21 to 26. It says, Lord Martha, Lord Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But, you, but I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. 
Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they will die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Good morning, church. My name is Joy Makoma Mochoge, and I'm going to read a verse from the book of Job 14, verse 1 to 5. It says, One ten born from a woman are a few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away, like fleeting shadows they do not endure. Do you fix your eyes on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can bring what I pure for the impure? No one. A person's days are determined. You have discreet the number of his months and, and have set limits he cannot exceed. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Natasha Monaya Mochoge. Today I'll be reading from the book of First Cor Corinthians, chapter, chapter? 15. chapter 15, verse 51 until 57. And it says, Listen, I tell you, a mystery... We, we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the tra last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable and will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal will be immortality then they then the saying that is written will come true death has been swallowed up in victory where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the glory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let, let nothing move you Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that you, your labor in the, in the Lord is not vain. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Nicole Kamuto Mochoge. I am going to read for you from... First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. It says, <coughs> Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uniformed, uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grave like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, 
we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left, we will we be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. Years back, this is where Martin, Edward, Daniel, and Sammy were doing the same things these grandchildren are doing. That's where they've remained in church. So we want to give an opportunity to start knowing that the church belongs to them. We apologize that the program has taken longer than what we thought, but we're almost there now. And um, we're inviting the King's Messengers, where Sami was one of the young people who started this program when he was young, and we have a few of the members still there who are young, but now they are mothers and fathers, and they want to show the children in church that you can also grow in church and still stay in church. Sami grew up in this church, and there's a special group uh, who started that time, the King's Messengers. We also have the youth, the young men and women of that time. They're also here. They're going to sing just before pastor speaks, and you'll be given a chance. So these are the youth of Sami's time. Welcome. Tempted and tried me, hoped me to, to wonder why it should be thus all the day long, while there are others living about us, never more Brother. 
the sunshine, we must understand it all by and by. When death has come and taken a loved one's leaving all home so lonely and dreary, then do we wonder why others prosper, living so weak and year after year. The sunshine will understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. Father, we'll know all about it. program. Again, I want just to remind us that uh, we have another session after this session. So we are not supposed to exhaust everything here. I'm still requesting that uh, we bear with the program here so that uh, we shall have time there also at Dagoretti Corner. At the moment, I want to invite the, the youth of, uh, I'm told it's like a homecoming or a what? Pastor, you mentioned what? The reunion. Uh, to give the last item, then the pastor will uh, stand. I believe, Pastor, pastor Guto, are you there now? Guto, please, you are supposed to say hi. 
Thank you, Pastor. After this music, uh, Daktari will stand. There is space this side if you can't feed, please Just push this side. Two. They used to sing with Sami when they were young, but now they are of age. Please come to this side. Uh, good morning. The song we're about to sing is in Kiswahili. It's called Atakuinua. Uh, the song is about leaning on to God when uh, times are tough and he'll uplift you. Thank you. I 
We bless the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In good times and in bad times, in the mountains and in the valleys, the Lord is still good to us. <clears throat> Thank you for your patience, brothers and sisters, young and old that are here this afternoon. Permit me to ask us to bow our heads as we pray together. In the stillness of this moment, our Father, We pause in your presence knowing that you who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities is again our ever-present help in time of need. We pause at this moment in your presence in knowing that you have told us, call upon me in times of trouble and I shall hearken unto thee. Heavenly Father, we come to your presence as we stand in the gap in behalf of the Mochoge family, knowing that you've promised under your wings they shall find solace and shelter. Now you who knoweth how to comfort and you who knoweth how to lift us up when our souls are weary, by the help of the Holy Spirit whom you sent us, our help and our comfort. Hover around us, O oh Lord. Comfort this family that they may have hope not only beyond the grave, but hope beyond the blue. Blessed Redeemer, their family and friends that have come here, and there are those that are watching us online from the world over, Unite our spirits today and help us to look at Christ and him alone, not only crucified but now resurrected, our hope of eternal life. And so comfort this multitude that when all shall be said and done, glory shall only be thine. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Days are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and dread. 
Barden zal lief ter aad Jesus is very near. Barden zal lief ter aad Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Barden's a lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Oh, cast your cares. Cast your cares on Jesus today. Leave your worry and fear. Oh, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus, Jesus is very near. The burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. sing this last stanza while we are standing troubled soul our savior is here please be upstanding troubled soul our savior can see heartache and tears his burdens are lifted at Calvary Jesus Like a minute, but ends a lifted at Calvary, 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 but ends a lifted at Calvary, Jesus. All heads bowed and all eyes closed, burdens indeed are lifted at Calvary. Blessed Redeemer. When the going gets tough and the crucibles are arrayed against our way, our hope never sways from you. When the storm is fierce and life seems to have no meaning, our anchor is in you. Our Heavenly Father, when our loved ones are torn from us by death, and before us hope seems to be blink, we know that we rest in peace that Christ is resurrected again. And we do hope for the grand reunion, our Heavenly Father. When gaps are left behind and loneliness comes its way, Christ, you know how to fill in the gap and lift us up to your throne of grace. When Elder Prof sits here and wonders why things come his way, when his sons, Dan, Eddie, and Martin, and their wives and their children, Malin, Michelle, Tiffany, Gabby, and Abby do not seem to understand why it has to happen like this. Lord, we can only say in their hearts, embed the message of peace and the message of hope. The entire fraternity gathered here this afternoon has come to only say one thing. Heavens are here with them. And Heavenly Father, we invoke your presence one more time. 
Because we know the things we speak sometimes have their faults, we who are mortal. How we pray that what word you open and speak to their hearts, may it be embedded in them to give them strength to walk their way. Blessed Redeemer, abide with us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Please be seated. A few years back, when I joined this church, Nairobi Central Estate Church, as a pastor, I remember being asked whether one of the elders is my father. That's because we shared a name. And I remember every now and again when I served in this congregation, he too was asked whether he has a son who is a pastor. At least I know Dan, Martin, Eddie, and we've been with them here, and your brother Sam. And he confidently said yes, He's my son. And since then, I have lived to be called his son, courtesy of the name that we share. I hear some of you saying, amen. Maybe I need a Photoshop to be put in that family there. But for those of you who remember, just about less than two years ago, Prof makes this call, and there's a way he makes himself so brief. Maybe, Professor Micheka, you'll tell me whether this is meant for all professors, because I also know you to be very brief. He makes this call, and he says, my son, your mom has slept. And he said this when he was at Jomo Kenyatta University, and the rest you all know. Now, a couple of weeks ago, again, a few minutes to six o'clock in the morning, he actually woke me up. And I received that strange call again in summary form. My son, I have lost Sammy. Now, I don't know about you, but I've taught myself one thing, and I would like to teach myself this thing again. Brethren, there are those moments that come when people bear heavy news and heavy messages. You feel that you have no words to speak to them. You just want to be like Job's friends and be there. That was me a couple of weeks ago. I remember my wife is seated here. I remember when we spoke with my wife, I said, how will we go to Prof? How can we even pray with him? How will, what will we even talk to him about? But I've learned this one thing, brethren. Like Job's friends, you do not have to talk. Like Job's friends, you do not have to do anything. You just need to be there and provide a shoulder. That's enough. And Prof, and my brothers who are here, and the sisters who are here, Maybe we may not speak enough right now that can make any meaning or any sense. But permit us with all humility to just be there with you. Just so we can provide the shoulder. Malin and Abby, Michelle, Tiffany and Gabby who is not here. Martin and your brothers, Eddie and Dan. Allow us to just be there. Yes, the crucible have been so heavy upon this family. But permit me to, like yourselves, go to the remembrance of the life of Samuel Mugusu Mochoge. I have summed it up in this one sentence. He lived a consistent life. He lived a consistent life. When you listen to his story, Sami, in service to God, his service begins in this church. 
maybe as an extension from home. I'm told he was a leader of the SDA group in Dagoretti School. And later on, he came here in Nairobi Central Church and he played a role in the Pathfinder group. He was one of the people that started the King's Messenger singing group and the list goes on and on and even when he travels abroad and lives in the States, his life as a man serving God remains consistent. Pastor, you can bear me witness in Dallas, in the new family life church, new life church, <clears throat> some of whom are actually watching us online right now. And later on, in his consistency at Dallas First Church, Marlene, where you met well in a singing group, I believe that the Lord will keep a song in your heart all the days of your life. He lived consistently in service to God. And I'm told, and I saw in some of the clips when you were having the Vespers in the tribute, he had a love for children, training them and raising them up. I can only say this. May the legacy that Sam left behind in consistency in service to God remain upon those that he has left behind. Sammy's life is not just consistent in the service to God. He is also consistent, I'm told, in his life and service to community. You may not know this, Pastor Ferdinand, but I was told. There was a time you had an issue with him in church. He comes over every Sunday and he picks the church van and he wants to go all over to continue to contribute food to the community. Am I, am I right? That was his consistent life. Every single Sunday, coming over, picks up the church van and he's all over to the community distributing food. That is son for you. Some is consistent in his life and he's a man who has integrated his faith to his workplace, brethren. And some of us have got a difficulty in integrating our faith in our workplaces, not like some. I'm told even in his college, he lived consistently until they have named one of the conference halls after some. Now, some of us have left our institutions. I do not know whether we are even remembered today. Wale ambao mekumbuka katika shule mlizo pita inweni mukono, aya wacheni tutaki haibu sasa hivi. He lived a consistent life until he leaves one of the conference rooms named after him. But I love this one thing that even in his family, he has this consistency in his love for his family. Not at home, not for his children. Michelle, Tiffany, Gabby, and Abby. I read your tributes and I listened to them and I could tell, indeed, like you mentioned while you were giving your tributes here, it's a father that loved you and wished to teach you what is the best thing that life can offer, not just in this life, but for the life to come, consistent. But brothers and sisters, you will all agree with me that Psalm 2 was consistent not only in his life for his family and for his God, but also for ministry. Abigail Magoma has confessed that and has said amen. For those of you who don't know, Abby is a six-month-old child for our brother Sammy. You hear him singing songs and in the tributes we heard his songs, Abide With Me. And lately we also saw a song that he sang. In memory of his late mom, whom he never had a privilege to be in her funeral. And I remember the song, Pastor, very well. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful show. May I say these words, brothers and sisters? Maybe some didn't know, but he sang these words confidently knowing that even after this life, we have a grand reunion in heaven. <clears throat> Maybe not just to meet with his mother, <clears throat> but that we shall all be reunited again when Christ comes. <clears throat> Permit me then, church members, because I know it's been spoken all, to just say these few words and give a clarion call with one text. To you, his children, Tiffany, Michelle, Gabby, your sister who is not here, 
and Abi. Your father has given you not so much, but your father has given you faith. So I say this, live by it. Grow in it. Defend it. For it shall describe your world to come minus him. But most importantly, it shall lead you to a grand reunion to meet him again. Leave that faith, Tiffany. Leave that faith, Michelle. And your little do- sister, Abby. The faith that your father taught you. And to you, his brothers, I'm speaking to my brother Dan. I'm speaking to my brother Martin. And I'm speaking to you, Eddie. And your wives that are seated here and your children. Listen to this. You may be one wheel down. Yes, there's been a tire puncture. It's a flat tire by now, but guess what? I know who is at the wheel, and I know who is the driver. The vehicle will move on. Someday, there'll be a change of the tire, and your brother will be back in place. Hold on the grip. And unto you, Marlene, I had your words in the tributes when you had the Vespers at Dallas. And this is what you said, Marlene, before I had the tribute today. You said this words. It was a privilege of a lifetime to have known him. He woke up every day with a song and a new song. You remember those words? Now I say this to you, Marlene. It may have been a short time for you. Christ has kept something in store for you for a long time. Keep holding on to that new song every day. Teach it to your daughter and your other daughters. And going forward, may he put a song in your heart. It is well. Prof, my father, this has been a very heavy moment of crucibles for you. When I came home the following day after you made a call to me, you walked us round, and these are the things that you mentioned, Prof. My son Sam spoke to me and he said he wants to come over December holidays to build a home for his family. Maybe today a different home will be built for him. But may I say these words to you, Prof. It's been a long and heavy journey for you, but there is a better home that the Lord has prepared for your son. He has said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. What does he say? Because I go to prepare a place for you. And when I come back, I will be with you. Your son Sam may not have had a privilege to build that home. But I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. He has prepared a better home for your son. Listen to me, church members. It is ever the Lord's desire to linger in the presence of those that are downtrodden. Those whose tears of brokenness flow. There is never a tear running down our cheeks without the Lord's attention. He admonishes us. Better to be in the house of mourning than that of Mary, the reason of your being here today. For he who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities is our ever-present help in time of need. I seem to always see him in the company of those that are bereaved. Now, as he did on earth to the family of Martha and Mary. And his presence there is to ever lift them that are low and to bear them under his wings. And so church members, allow me to say this in conclusion. To the entire family seated here today, listen to these words. When calamities choose to come your way, remind yourself God's favor never sways. When God seems to be silent on you, remind yourself he wasn't when his son was in the toughest of crucibles. 
When tears soak your pillows, remind yourself the billows may toss, but his peace shall still and wipe them away. And when loneliness will open the gap wide, remind yourself he went to prepare a place for reunion. He is there with you. And when the storm is on and much on you, remind yourself he will make you like an eagle to rise on top of the storm and sway together with you. Brethren, allow me to read this text in conclusion. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32. The Bible says this, the wicked is banished in his wickedness. I love the latter part of it. And listen to it, brethren. It says, by the righteous has a refuge in death. You all didn't hear me. It says, but the righteous has hope in his death. We have hope here today that when one of our own dies, there is hope beyond the grave. There is hope beyond the grave, brethren. When the righteous die, he has a refuge in death. My prayer is, when death will seem to knock its way to us someday, may we, like the righteous, have rest and refuge in the Lord, like our brother did. He served consistently his life over. My prayer is, in his consistency, we look beyond the blue where the Lord shall say, you lived faithfully, well done, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. It's our prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. Prof, please stand. Please. Please be up on your feet. Marlene, please stand. Dan, Eddie, and Martin, and your wives and children. Tiffany, Michelle, please stand. Please stand. Great. Allow me to say this to you. The greatest desire that Jesus has is not to split and part families. The greatest desire that Jesus has is to have families together. The temporary departure that happens upon the world beneath, he has a solution for it. Someday, like little children read, he comes holding the hands of our loved ones with the very voice that he said towards the grave when he called forth Lazarus, he shall call forth our loved ones. Martin, we look forward to see mom. We look forward to see Sam there. My only prayer is live your lives faithfully until someday Christ will reunite you, the entire family, with Sam and mom. And the gaps left behind shall be filled by our Lord and we shall be an entire family together again. Until then, may the song that he sang, in the sweet by and by, we will be together someday. May that song remain upon our hearts. I love saying these words, and allow me to say them again. Our fondest hopes are blighted here when our loved ones are torn from us by death. We close their eyes and habit them for the tomb. It seems as if our spirits are thwarted, but listen. The life giver is coming. Oh, the life giver is coming. He's coming with myriads of angels escorting him. He shall burst forth the fetters of the tomb and call forth the captives from the grave. And he shall say to them, Awake, awake that ye that sleep in the dust. Now not unto damnation, but unto everlasting life. We look forward to such statements being mentioned. But until then, may the Lord be your strength. But until then, may that song remain upon your hearts. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Father, the ministers are coming to pray for this family. But permit me to beseech of you this one thing. Bear this family under your wings. 
And one more thing we request of thee, Heavenly Father. Though those crucibles be heavy upon them, permit them to know that you bore the pain in our behalf. For all burdens were lifted in Calvary. This family, yes, moans and cries, sheds tears, but it does so with hope. My prayer is, Heavenly Father, your word spoken to us this afternoon is clear. When the wicked perishes in his wickedness, the righteous has got refuge in their death. Our prayer is, and our desire, that the death that our brother died is that of a refuge in his death. We look forward to the grand reunion. Hold this family together and work with them. And as Lord, today, we finish the last lake of our brother's life. In his journey, as we celebrate him and lay him to rest, we know that thou shalt command his guardian angel to watch over his grave until the resurrection morning. And as you do so, may the rest of the angels watch over this family and lift them up forevermore. Be not dismayed, whatever be tight, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of our sail, God will take care of you. Let everybody sing. God will take care every day all the way he will take care of you God will take care of you be not dismayed God will take care of you please be seated You are, you are a strong man. Thank you, Daddy. You are a strong man and you are the pillar of this family. And uh, I thank God that uh, God knows how to also choose. He allowed you to be there and also to unite the family as a father and a grandfather also to the children. We are now coming to the, a very special ses uh, session of prayer. And this particular time now we want to, for the sake of space, we are going to request only the immediate family members uh, to come here. And uh, we are going to have a very special prayer from uh, two pastors. Uh, that is... Uh, my president here, Pastor Nchana, and also I'll pray as a, the pastor to the professor. Now, kindly, I want to request the immediate family members to come forward. When I'm requesting, I think uh, I'm trying to request that those of other family members I know we are here, the cousins and the aunties and the uncles, we might not all of us be able to come up front here, but I want us to request for the immediate family members who are seated close here. Let's come here. Uh, so the, the pastors who are here also, I request that uh, they come forward. And uh, also the, the, the elders, the ordained elders that we are here, or the church ordained elders, we make a circle. We make a circle. Others will be standing here up front, the ordained ministers and the pastors who are here. Please, kindly. 
If you are in the congregation and you are a serving elder or you are ordained but you are not serving, you are still valid. Please come. Let's make a circle. I want us to make a circle also from here, this other side here. Some of us will stand here along these uh, the stairs, please. We stand as we face up front. We thank the elders who are coming and uh, the rest of the, the church uh, membership, the friends who are here and others that we are here, we shall also stand as we worship God in prayer. So I'll briefly pray, and then I'll allow uh, Pastor Guto, I know you are here, and then Pastor Onchana will close. Where is Pastor Guto, please? Uh, you'll uh, pray after me, then uh, Pastor Onchana will close. Gracious Father and God in heaven, we know that it's a great privilege even to call your name. We thank you, Father, because in your wisdom you created man and woman in your own likeness. And we thank you, Father, that even after the interruption of our lives through Satan, we thank you that, Lord, you gave us a second chance through your Son, Jesus Christ. We are here, Father, to celebrate life. We know that you are the source of life. And that is the reason, Father, you commanded your children not to mourn like those people who don't have hope. We thank you because these experiences that we go through, Father, you understand them. We know that even Jesus Christ, when he was dying at the cross, he cried. And it is an evidence that, Father, death is an enemy. But we thank you for the blessed hope that we have our son Jesus Christ, the hope of eternal life. And Father, we are here in a special way as a church to unite together in prayer. And we have surrounded this family with your grace, Father. We want to pronounce grace in Jesus' name. We pronounce also special comfort from your source. You are the God of comfort, Father. We pronounce peace in your name, Father. We also, Father, request that, Lord, this experience will increase their faith, Father. We know that this is a moment where, Father, you expect us to have strong faith because we have the evidence that, Lord, we are going to meet Sami. We pray for the widow, Dr. Malin, we pray for the children that have been left behind. We pray for the pro, the daddy, the pillar of the family. Father, continue strengthening this man. He's your friend. We pray for the sons, Edward, Daniel, and even Martin. We pray for their wives. We pray for the grandchildren to professor. We pray for the extended family, Father. You are the healer. May you heal them, Father, by your grace. Thank you for these elders that came to stand with your man servant. We know, Father, our prayers have already been answered because of your favor. We have requested in Jesus' name. Amen. Together, our Father and our God in heaven, we just want to present this family before your presence that, Lord, wipe away their tears by faith as they wait for you to do it physically when you come with the resurrection morning. Father, we know that your word is true, that those who have rested trusting in you, Lord, there is the resurrection waiting for them. 
our friend who has slept some, Lord, we know that when that moment comes, when the trumpet, Lord, shall sound, we shall be able to see him and be reunited with you forever. For now, Lord, may your promises come through to the family. Be the good shepherd, so that, Lord, even though they walk through the shadow of the valley of death, they will fear no evil because your presence is with them. Give them that assurance during this time. Give them the courage. Comfort their hearts, Lord, to know that there is life beyond the grave for those who trust in you. Father, we know that our brother will just rest waiting for that moment. Surround this family. Lord, may your courts of love keep them until you come to take us home. For we know that that moment is coming. For now, Heavenly Father, may they find true peace as they lay their beloved one to rest and wait for the resurrection morning. It's our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father, we stand before your presence with thanksgiving this afternoon. We thank you because the Mojoge family have now known that you love them. We thank you, God, because you brought men and women in great numbers and they have comforted and talked to them. We thank you, God, because they now know that you are walking ahead as they fall from behind. We thank you, God, because they have been assured and they know now that you shall be there for them forever, whatever happens. We praise you and we thank you, God, that now they know that they are worshiping a living God. And we thank you because they have been assured that some have just slept. We now pray that you may take the gap that has been created. For the children, fill the gap as the father. For the wife, fill the, wife, the gap as the husband. For the parents, please fill the gap as the child. And for the brothers and sisters, fill that gap as a brother that they may be able to be comforted with the comfort that comes to your throne of grace. And from now henceforth, as they walk, let them walk in confidence. As they live, let them live in hope. And the Lord, as they think, let them think as people expecting the favor of the Lord, that the children may continue to be protected and the grown-ups may continue to experience love and peace. And more so, when all is done in this world, when that trumpet said, shout that blessed morning, our Father, when you reunite friends, let Sammy as the great friend be united with this family. May these family's members take care of their faith and remain firm and focused in you and only wait in anticipation for that great hope. We thank you this afternoon for that has transpired here. Now, as they continue the rest of the program in the second session, let them know that, Lord, you have now answered the prayers, you have taken over the everything, you are in church and in court of their lives, there's nothing to worry, for all is in your safe hands. Thank you, because we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We can be seated now. Thank you. The ministers who are here, we can shake the hands of the family who are stepping down. Dr. Uh, as we now come to the end, uh,
Sir. God is good, and all the time, uh, we are now concluding the session. Uh, we are privileged also to have the governor coming in just a moment as he walks in. Uh, and before he walks in, I want to recognize and also request uh, Brother Zachary Ochako, who was the chair of the funeral committee. He was very instrumental in the process of trying to organize for this funeral within here. Okay, Chair, I, I am told that uh, the governor is already in, but I've seen the deputy governor walking out. Uh, oh, Baba. That is now your friend has gone this other direction. So can someone assist the, uh, the deputy governor so that he knows that uh, his boss is here already? <laughs> Brother Simbarati. Okay. Okay. Baba. Uh, just come. Come. I know protocols demand that your deputy calls you. But uh, these protocols, now the pastor will invite you also. So, uh, uh, in the meantime, Dr. Monda is walking in. Okay. Okay. Please, oh, Dr. Pole for the confusion. Your friend is here already. The governor is going to speak, talk to us. Uh, deputy, you want to? Okay, fine. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, he, he had gone to the other site. He thought that we were already there at Krarapon. But uh, that is also a good experience for a leader. Uh, it's good. <laughs> so. Baba, thank you. He's one of us. He's our church member. We are proud of you. You are allowed to speak to your people. Thank you. Karibu San. Uh, Pastor, thank you. I'm the professor, the family of the late my brother Samuel Mugusu. I want to convey my condolences. I was at Serena this morning. Then I was at around 11, 11.30, I left for Krarabon. I thought last week when I came over to your place, me, I thought everything was happening up there. And I called for DG, my deputy, Dr. Monda. He told me, you know, we are at Central. If I started coming again back, Though we want to thank you, uh, DG. Uh, this is my church. The professor comes from a place that is in Bubasi. I know it befell him twice now. Uh, the wife passed away the other day through the pandemic, Corona. The son, MZB is strong. The family, I can see the young baby you are talking about, Pole. Pole, I'm a strong believer. My pastor is here, I was baptized up here. Uh, we always be preached to. 
that uh, not long we will meet again. Uh, secondly, I can see so many of my church elders around. Uh, thank you for comforting the family. Justice Bosira, I can see you. You know, this is my elder. I was teaching my wife uh, in the baptism class. And so many leaders. The prof, up to yesterday, you know very well I've not formed my garment in Kisi. Therefore, I'm like, how oh, old is professor? What can he bring on board in that garment? But I realize you are an expert in soil. You know, the soil in Kisi is dead because of the poisoning through the fertilizers we have been putting. I did promise last week, I was told, Simba, you are too fast. Professor can't catch up with you with the speed. Bring him. He will speed down your, your speed in terms of what we want to do to our people. For those ones who traveled from afar from the U.S. and the other friends, thank you for accompanying the family of the late. The only thing we pray is that God to give the family and challenge over this. I know the brother is behind here, uh, Dakari Poleni. More important, I don't know how many of you here, for Samuel, Samuel has loved us. I don't know how many of you here were sure that tomorrow will be alive. For me, I know that by God's will, I may live to 100 years if Jesus Christ has not come. But then, it's also God's will that tomorrow if we don't get there, we will definitely make it to heaven. Can we be angels of our own time? Nobody can fix the problems that we could be having at the moment. We must be angels of our own time, and it's now, not in our time. Others, I'm the professor. I know you are the colleagues here, Professor Micheka. You remember last week when we were talking. Uh, professor Choti, we were with him yesterday. He was to join with us. These are the close families of uh, Professor. I've seen so many people from Om. From Yonseri, the likes here, Kina, eh, iti miot, naona tim kubwa, asanteni kwa kukuja. Kwa wale ambao, watasafiri nyumbani, peleka, and I want to say something about the professor. Professor, the time we are campaigning, we had a convoy of around 300 vehicles. Then we decided to pass through Yonseri. As we were passing through, we met Professor. Professor was not feeling that time well. I met him on the road. He stopped me. Mwishmiwa, can I join you? But Prof, you look not well. No, no, let me go around with you. Professor got into, I don't know, you got into your vehicle. Prof followed us all through, through Nyacheki, Nyamachi, Nyacheki, Magena. And it was not well then. They will stand with you as a, as a team, my team with my deputy and the government of Kisi as well. You stand with us. For those ones who come from Kisi, is your duty, is my humble request to appeal to you. Anybody who think he can deliver And this is the only time that I, because I have only up to Tuesday. New Lisa the Fadali. Come on, I talk a kisi. Nuna jiskia. Utaiza kimbia safari moja. The blessings that we'll get through serving our people. Kuja. 
just bosire kama wewe ungekubali kuja ukwe uh, um, count anthony i know you will fix my my legal department but i know you may not take it up <laughs> But there are those ones who have a feeling. There is a leader here, and this guru with the church. This is a engineer. Yeah, from Nyamira. I know the work the church stands for. Kwebona ulize anybody who's willing. Na kubali prof ni ulize swali hili. Yoyota na jisikia. Kombata is a kuja pastor. Awa watu ni wako kama kuna mtu unaamini hapa hezi kuja kuiba pesa ya mtu tafadhali we niambie akuje in the honor of Samuel utuambie kwamba ulisema hii we will definitely fix our account that's my humble request before my people others thank you poleni once more ndugu yetu tukimweka mahali anapolala continue praying for the family that's the all refuge we have others thank you and god bless you thank you dj oh you want you know i came and sat there i can <laughs> i'll come there thank you Pastor, pastor happened to be my pastor when uh, we were at Riruta. In our church, we used not to have seats, stones. And then when I was a young boy, uh, thank you, Pastor, for the continued shepherd to your glorious people. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, Baba. We are proud of you. You are changing seats, going that direction. Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, the chair has something to say, then uh, after the chair, we are going to invite uh, Dr. Edward to give us a vote of thanks on behalf of the family, and then immediately after it's done, uh, the church choir, Kerarapon church choir, will give us an item, a closing item. Then Pastor Mochoge, Dr. will pray, and then uh, we shall be given directions on how to leave this place. Please. God is good. In all the times. Thank you so very much for attending this function. Mine is very brief. I just want to take this early opportunity, Your Excellency, May the Lord and Your Excellency, our Governor Simbarati, and your Deputy Governor, we are indeed gratified for you gracing this occasion once again. May the Lord bless the work of your hands. I just want to uh, tell you that we were we formed a committee, or a, form, a committee was formed, and this committee has worked tirelessly within the time that they have, they spent many hours of their time to make this program become what it has become today. I therefore want to recognize the following who assisted us in discharging this function. Of course, my name is Zachary Ochako Elder. I was chairing the sessions for this committee. I want to recognize the secretary, Dr. Kreef, Cliff, kindly raise up, Obuogi, who was the secretary. I want to recognize um, Ken Gall, the elder representing all elders of Ngong district. I want to recognize Dr. Lucas Otuera Pastor, who, notwithstanding his many functions, was with us on everyday purpose. And thank you, Pastor. I want to also recognize uh, Madam Foundation, Rithina Margaret Mogoba, for the good works, including, of course, securing the grounds where we are going to. Margaret, are you around, if you are around? Uh, I also want to recognize, uh, of course, the family member who was our treasurer, 
Dr. Dan Mochoge. Dan, uh, we want to recognize you. He was our treasurer. Um, I want to recognize Ambassador Sam Monda. Uh, kindly, he has just arrived from uh, where he went uh, to Addis Ababa. Kindly welcome and thank you for the good works. I want to recognize also Elder David Ogega. Uh, if you are around, kindly wave to the congregation. I want to recognize elders from Gong area uh, who also helped us in the Wise Council. I also want to recognize Pastor, uh, my dear brother, uh, you know yourself, stand up, stand up my brother, thank you so very much, and uh, all of them are there. I think I finally want to recognize the Karara Pony SDA Church for helping us, and imagine this is a very small church, but they managed to help us with great funds. Uh, may the Lord bless them. Finally, the neighborhood of Kerarapon Estate from first drive to drive 26 in the uh, other neighboring places for even assisting us. W uh, we'll talk more if time allows. May the Lord bless each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Daktari, are you ready? Edward? You are ready? Edward is coming over to give the vote of thanks on behalf of the family. After he's done, the church choir will come. After the church choir is done, pastor will pray, and then the MC engineer, John, will give us direction. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, church. Good afternoon once again. Yeah, I've been given this privilege on behalf of the Mochogi family to be able to give a vote of thanks. Um, we'd like to thank all of you for being with us. And uh, it's been a tough time, but your presence you being here with us, showing us your support, means a lot um, to the family. We like to, in a special way, thank the families that have been with us, the larger Onyego family, the Nyakiana family, the Omao family, Shemro's family. We thank you for being with us. You were there consulting with us, visiting with us, staying with us at our place. We'd also like to have special recognition of His Excellency Simba Rati and His Deputy Governor, Dr. Monda, for also being able to visit with us. All the ministers of the gospel who also took their time to come and uh, comfort with the family, we thank you. Dr. Otuera, thank you for your services, Pastor Mochoge and many more who came to visit with us feel much uh, appreciated. In a special way, we'd also like to recognize the U.S. family and friends who are comforting with uh, part of our extended family who stays abroad, as well as friends and relatives from various congregations in the churches within Nairobi and Gwang District we would like to thank you for visiting with us and being there for us. Kerarapon Church Choir, thank you for your service, for your music sessions, uh, together with all the choirs that also visited with us, the youth choir alumni that was also there. Thank you, MMG, also for your service. We feel much appreciated. In a special way, we'd also like to uh, remember or recognize um, Sally Kotut, she's been able to give us the flowers at no pay. We thank her for that. And also for the city council uh, group or uh, 
members who have enabled us to use the venue that we are heading to in a few minutes' time at no cost. We thank you for that. Um, all family, friends, whoever I have not recognized, feel appreciated. We thank you. It's not been easy, but because of you being there with us in various ways, through your prayers, through your visitation, through your giving, through your encouraging messages and phone calls, we felt at peace in the storm, and uh, we'd like to thank you all for that. Um, it just reminds us that uh, this world is not home. Um, how many of us would love to be reunited with those who have left this earth before us? How many of us? Um, the question is, what are you doing about it? Are you making an intention to meet them? Are you living a life that Christ would want you to live so that you might be able to reunite with your loved ones? Sami is gone. He's finished his earthly journey. And from all the testimonies and all the word that we've received, we like to believe that he slept on the Lord's side, and on the resurrection morning, he will wake up and meet Christ in the clouds of the heaven. Our challenge is, will you be there? Thank you for coming for this service, and may the Lord bless you. Kerara Ponkwa, you're invited for an item. Jewe watamani upate kuingia kwenye mji wa Yerusalem mahali ambapo hapana masumbuko wala maumivu hakuna pale wala maumivu hakuna pale Jewe watamani upate kuingia kwenye mji wa Yerusalem mahali ambapo hapana masumbuko wala maumivu hakuna pale wala maumivu hakuna pale itakuwa furaha ajabu kuingia kwenye jiji hilo kile kilicho kinyonge hakitaingia pale yerusalem itakuwa furaha ajabu kuingia kwenye jiji hilo kile kilicho kinyonge hakitaingia pale yerusalem Washindi wa dhambi wote wataingia kwenye mji wa Yerusalem Yesu akiwa mwenyeji wa mji huo tutakaa naye milele zote tutakaa naye milele zote Washindi wa dhambi wote wataingia kwenye mji wa Yerusalem Yesu akiwa mwenyeji wa mji huo tutakaa naye milele zote 
Thank you very much for the service that has just ended. As we have repeatedly said, we are going in for a second service. And we wish to invite every one of you who will be able to make it there. We still want to continue standing with this family to the very last of the celebration of our brother Samuel. At this moment, I'll request that after we have had a prayer, kindly just remain seated. We will be guided as to how we shall walk out to view the body at the basketball court. We would like to have some very good order because we are quite a multitude. And so if we shall not follow the order we shall be guided by, I think it shall be a, quite a commotion. It is the family that will go out first through this door and then the rest will be guided as to which doors you shall be using. May I request that we all be upstanding kindly. We'll offer the last prayer. And after that, please... You remain seated. <clears throat> the, the, the venue to start at 3 o'clock, so we shall see how best we shall uh, rush this program, starting from the body viewing out here. Uh, we, you, you will be organized on how to view so that we move a bit faster. Let us not clog at, uh, at the queue. We need to move fast so that we are able to go to the other side. Uh, the last announcement is uh, that uh, uh, the burial site is uh, not very spacious at the home at Kerapon, so we are going to have mainly uh, family members who shall uh, be uh, at the burial site. So that is uh, the announcement that I have been given to give. Uh, the doors that are on this side will not be used, so if they can be closed, I will appreciate so that we use only these doors. Yeah, then uh, I just want to recognize one community that uh, is very important and has not been recognized. The community from Yonseri is not uh, been recognized and that is the home of uh, the, our late brother Sami and uh, the, the, the family, I would like to ask just for you to rise, those from Yonseri and from Masige in general. Please rise up. Let's see you. Please wave, those of you. This is uh, the community where Professor, my uncle, comes from, and uh, the late Sami. May God bless you too, and uh, be blessed as we go to the next program. We want to thank God for you, for being patient, and for being here to support this special family. As we said, this is a house of God for all men and women. You are welcome to come and worship here on every Sabbath, every Saturday from 8.30. Everybody is welcome to come and worship. We would like to ask the special team of ushers, could I have four ashes? The youth, the, the old youths now. Four ashes. Are you here? 
I want four people to help us. Is there among us, any among us? Okay, can you organize four of us to come to the front? And we want to spread this to four, four doors so that we can ease the congestion. Uh, please, I, are there some of those young ones who are old now? The ones who sang in the front? The union of the youths of the past. I, I'm not seeing enough numbers. Okay, I'll ask any of among us, the young people who are here, or the connoisseurs who are here, the young ones who are here. Okay, we, have, we also apologize that we have not had a very nice flow of information. Quite a number of us who are associated with Professor in his teaching career, starting from Kabete, all the way to KU, you are here and we did not recognize you. We apologize. We've just learned that you are here. Could you please stand? Professor Mchek, I know you, you, you are the only one who has both, wears both hats from, from Kabete, KU, from Jekuyat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming and for coming to support the family. Uh, we would like to have the, man, the, the doors manned first. We, let's have the four doors. And as we go out, we want the ball bearers to come, not the four bearers, sorry, the family to come. They will be led by a pastor. The viewing will be done at the basketball in the, in the format that you'll be directed. May God bless you for being too patient. Continue to be patient until Christ comes.
it's a perfect example just looking around right now. Sam attracted big crowds, right? His daughters were saying he likes to talk, used to like to talk in front of people. And with his passing, he's also attracted a big crowd. A lot of people um, have reached out to the family, and we can just see how big the impact of Sammy in the lives of everybody has been. And I really think that the enemy was happy with Sammy's passing because for him, a servant of God at that moment, uh, his ministry stopped. His passing put a lot of doubt in the faith of many people. And with his passing, it's created a lot of pain, a lot of hurt. And with pain and hurt comes many other things, as illnesses, depression, and many other things. So I think that the enemy was happy. Now, I think there's one thing that can anger or cannot anger the enemy more then for us not to let Sammy's passing pass in vain, um, Martin and another, all their other friends have been sharing how important Sammy used to share the seed of God. And I think for us here is the opportunity to tell the enemy that if he thought taking Sammy away was going to stop the ministry, each of you and us, the community, that I think are thousands of people of what I've seen, are going to go out there and spread the seed even more. And if he thought he was just taking one person away and the impact Sammy could do, he's not even understanding what we can all do now. So let this be our tribute to Sam, that our attitudes today are different that we look next to us and see who we can help and how. And there's nothing that I think can make the enemy shake more than knowing that he has soldiers, that God has soldiers, that Sammy has inspired us to continue to, to take God's message. Sammy's work was not done here on earth, but God's work is not done either. So I challenge all of you today, if Sam inspired you in any way, try to also pass on that blessing that he provided you at some point. And just to, to close it up, I want to thank Sam. He's over there in the van for making me a Shangazi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. What a testimony for our son, our grandson. It's good when we are alive and ensure that we make a uh, positive impact, touch people's lives. It's a great sermon and a testimony. Uh, this time, I want to invite or recognize the group that came from Yonseri, where uh, uh, Professor comes from, that is home to come here for a photo. I want to come to Bali Mwaru Gionseli, go to Koreta, Mariga Ino, Napoli Ino, in Chuanga Iga, to a Kwebi Chaiga, or your Masabe, a crop of a second, a Korigeria, the Bako Ranga, I want to come to Baji Tekonda, in Chuango, to be a care in here to a Kwebi, I want to come to Thank you. 
Memaliza, are we done? Basi to tape a MCA. I was a ku ku. Ambaya ata wakilisha iyo group yote barongo. Very good. Vitengo kando ikaranza mele mele. Very good. I'm waiting for Prof to sit down. We can answer for Anga, okay? Then Jaching, okay? Very good. Now, um, I also want to take this opportunity to thank the people who have come here to support Prof and family on behalf of the people of Gionseri, where we come from, which is my ward. I'm the elected member of Counter Assembly for Masige West, where Prof comes from. So on behalf of that particular ward, I want to really say Paulet to the family for the loss of his son. Again, I want to be very, I need to recognize only two people here. They will not speak because of time, but they come from home. We have Mwishmiwa Samuel, you can stand and Mogusu, he was vying for MP from home. Thank you, Mashmiwa. We have another Mashmiwa here, Matoke. He's a very senior. He was actually vying for governor from Kisi County. And then at some point, I know you will have a chance to speak if you allow me. So basically, I want to say Paul to the family for the loss of uh, our brother Sam. Uh, and to the family, please, we are with you during these difficult times. We will continue being with you in prayer. And Prof, please. Uh, receive our condolences. Asante sana, mungu wa bariki. And to the MC, MC, listen to me, please. When you came to our community, you say you spoke in Kisi. Our people understand English also. So don't be very unfair to us a bit, but we are very happy to be here. And we join the family during these different times. We will support them. Asante sana. Asante sana. We appreciate the group from Gion City for coming in big numbers to support this family. I want to give this chance, just a minute or two, to Matoke. Matoke was the aspiring governor in Nikisi, and is a, a, a resident of US to say a word, very quickly. Na wasalimu kwa jina la esu wa mjambo nyote. Wa antobalimu harusi na inumbi ya mule. Mbiya mono sana. Sante sana. Dr. Malin and your lovely daughter. Uh, Michelle and your siblings uh, and the entire family prof Tunasema Pole. My name is Charles Matoke. Yes, I live in uh, Dallas. I live there with uh, I live there with Sami in Texas uh, But now I'm in Kenya um, I first wish to sincerely um, Sema Pole to to the whole family and to the community at large and tell the guys in Dallas, or uh, Texas, to be precise, to um, Nawashkuru Sana. Thank you for making this possible. My brothers from Texas, I saw you here. Asante Sana for all you have done. And the committee that has prepared um, these funeral arrangements, we also appreciate. And we say thank you so much, and may God bless you. I don't want to say much. It's just my sincere um, uh, condolences. And pray that God 
um, protects uh, Sami's children and uh, and his wife and the entire family. Abadi muarugu si na inuga akina abata ebringa pole soko sirio muano ino tega nyasa e amoti moki biya na intu wadi tuwa tigara tiga tuwe bolinga na akina intu ka esabari e gayo bogi ma buna toga endrete na akina nyasa e na intu ara tokonye elinde tonya arakoba nechi mbuchingi ya unechi asami. I thank you for the opportunity, the organizers. Asante sana bwana chairman for giving me a chance. Uh, my sister Karani, I think, is somewhere there. Uh, Asante sana pia kuakuja. She was also running for, I think, uh, women rep in Kisi County. Asante ni sana and may God bless you. Pole. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we wish you well. Uh, Baron, just a minute. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Baron Muga. Uh, some of you may know me, uh, others may not recognize me because of the long time that has elapsed, either since we met or because I've never met you. Uh, but allow me to share a little bit about my connection with Sami. Um, for me, uh, ours is a story of longevity and a depth of friendship. I met Sami uh, in Standard One uh, when he came and uh, joined us in Lavington Primary School. I still remember that because he could not speak Swahili. So uh, they just moved back from Germany, and that is when our friendship began. Uh, we had good times in primary school. Um, Sami was one of those unique individuals who was good both in class and also in extracurricular activities. So that was an unusual uh, combination for him. Uh, as we grew older, his legs grew longer, and I could not keep up with him. Uh, he was good at running, and he was also good at math. Uh, we used to play this game called Three Sticks, where we'd jump on three sticks, and uh, he was impressed that I was trying to keep up with him. Uh, he was good at running, and he was also good at math. Uh, we used to play this game called Three Sticks, where we'd jump on three sticks, and uh, he was impressed that I was trying to keep up with him. Um, uh, but he was, he was good at, at many things. Uh, one of the things we did when we were in primary school together is in Standard 7 or Standard 8, we started a Christian union, and Sami was part of that core group uh, that we did that with. Uh, we connected still in secondary school because uh, we both attended uh, Maxwell, uh, the uh, church that we just came from. And so we were keeping tabs even though we were not in the same school. And when we cleared from four, uh, we started hanging out quite a bit. Uh, we would spend a lot of time together doing different things. We sang in the youth choir together. Uh, we, we drove our parents' cars together. Uh, so we just had a really tight connection. We played video games together. So Sami was, was me and I was Sami. Uh, I, went in the U I went to the U.S. in 1995. And Sami joined in 1996. When he got to Dallas, he wrote me a letter. And when I knew he was around, we started visiting each other. And then in 1999, uh, he called me and told me that he, he wanted a fresh start. And he wanted to move to Memphis, where I was living. And so I told him, the door is open. Come on. So he packed up his things. He moved to Memphis. And he stayed with me and my brothers for a few months uh, before he actually got his own place and eventually moved in with a mutual friend of ours called uh, Robert Kateri. We went to the same university. University of Memphis together. I would pick him up in the morning. Uh, we would go to school together. And every once in a while, when we had other people in the car and I wanted to give them a shock of their lives, I'd let Sami drive, drive us to school. And uh, they, would, they would really get a shock of their lives. I think Sami could have done well in Formula One racing. He was also very safe in doing that. Uh, Sami was one of the select few of individuals who was there when I proposed to my wife, Jacqueline, who's uh, here with me. Uh, when we got married, Sami was my best man. Uh, at the wedding. So we were really connected. When he graduated, he moved back to Dallas, but we kept on visiting each other back and forth. Uh, the final time we connected was when I told Sami that we were going to be moving to Kenya. Uh, he drove uh, from Dallas and came just to spend time with us uh, and just to say goodbye to us. At that time, I thought he was saying goodbye to us since we were coming to Kenya, but now I realize we were the ones who were really uh, saying goodbye to him. Uh, the Sami that is known in, in Dallas and in other places, you know, his selflessness, his positivity, his optimism, his willing to sacrifice, his ability to brighten moments, his unique humor, uh, his acceptance of everybody, his interest in others. Uh, that's the Sami I've known all my life. So it's not anything new. And I really enjoyed the privilege of having, to known, uh, having known him all this time. He was a big guy, but he never made anyone feel small. Uh, and um, he kept on cheering us on. When, Sami also had problems, but you would have never known it. Uh, one of the things that he always liked, I gave him a tape for Les Brown, and Les Brown says, when life knocks you down, try to land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. Sami got up many times. So ours was a time-tested uh, bond of brother-like friendship that no circumstance, experience, mistake, or success could break, 
and dilute. And these last few days have been difficult, I'm sure, for the family, but for us too, as we mourned him, especially in isolation. Uh, but we thank God for the experiences that we had together. I never imagined that Sami would be gone. Uh, there are some people who we expected to grow old with, and Sami was... Many people have also spoken. I want to talk about, briefly, about the life of Daniel within the shortest moment that I have. And uh, I want us to appreciate that Daniel was also living and he was alive at one time. But uh, the theme that I want us to build on, it is the theme of being in exile, in exile. Daniel was in exile and uh, he went to exile because of the circumstances that were there. He was forced, and we know the history, that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar decided to come to Jerusalem, and he took some of the young people there, and Daniel was one of them. And they, they were taken to that foreign land in Babylon. And uh, there in Babylon, the king decided that uh, he was going to make sure that uh, he brainwashes these young men. The strategy of the king was to make them that uh, even when they think, even in the cultural orientation, they should, think, uh, they should think like Babylonians. And uh, we know the story that uh, he decided even to rename them, giving them new names. He gave them even other foods to eat. And uh, again, when it came to religion, he wanted them to worship his gods. I'm speaking to us because I know in this life, you need to remind yourself that you are in exile. And sometimes we do forget that uh, we are pilgrims on this earth. And uh, we get mixed up. And when King Nebuchadnezzar decides to change our thinking, some of us, we have been compromised. I'm speaking to us because most of us, we are talking about the influence that Sami was able to do or to, to make while he was alive. And uh, we also talk about the stewardship of influence, whereby that your life by itself should be a sermon. Hallelujah. And uh, I have heard some people talking about the attitude some of you, you are talking about, you want to be like him. So, let me talk about Daniel. Daniel is a good example in the Old Testament, whereby I'm going to be reading only three verses in that book, but I was only putting the foundation. Making you understand that uh, this world where we are, again, we are in exile. Some of us, we have moved from home. We have even gone to other places, like the team that was here that came with Samuel from U.S. But I want to ask you, even as you are staying in U.S. there, do you still remember that you are also in exile? Because you can be in U.S. and then you can be compromised there. The thinking the culture there, the influences, the negative influences. Because one of the threats that we have uh, in the church, it is the influence of the world threatening our doctrines, our teachings. And uh, we know that there are things that are constant because God is constant. Hallelujah. We know the issues of uh, homosexuality, it's a threat. But uh, when you go to other places, it's now been allowed or accommodated. And uh, sometimes we do think that God, he can reason with us. And some of us, we have even justified some of these things. So when we are talking about this, I just want to remind the young people that stood here, that uh, it's a team from U.S. Always remember home, because we are told even Daniel, when he used to pray, he could pray facing Jerusalem, because he knew that Jerusalem is where the, the true God was living. Hallelujah. 
and he decided not to worship God facing the eastern side where the sun rises. So my brothers who are now living in a foreign land, I want you also to remind yourself that uh, like Daniel, you should stand for the true God. The verses that I'm going to read uh, is from the, the book of Daniel chapter number 12, the first one. I want to begin by verse number 13, where Daniel was told by God through the angel that, but, that uh, but you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Hallelujah. I want you to take note of the words that uh, Daniel was told by God himself. God told Daniel that for, as for you, go and rest. You know, in Hebrew term, it is said that the word that was uh, used here, actually God told Daniel that uh, it is your time to sleep. I know some of us, or most of us here, we are parents. There are times when you struggle with your children or your babies to sleep. They don't want to go to sleep because they still want to remain uh, awake. And some of them, if you choose to leave them, they can even be awake the whole night. I have that experience with my children who are now adults, when sometimes they refuse, they used to refuse to sleep. And I, I usually remind them, do you remember those days when we could force you to sleep? Because sleep is good. Now, in this particular case, in the context of what God was telling da Daniel, God was reminding Daniel that uh, at the end of this life, we must rest. And the rest that we are talking about here, it is actually the rest of resting in uh, that condition of where we must die. But the good news, God also connected by saying that uh, time is coming when you are going to receive your inheritance. Praise the Lord. So I want us to be reminded that uh, dying is not negative to those who trust and believe in the Lord because it is taking a break from the toils of this life, from the challenges of this life. I know generally you cannot uh, meet someone who is happy, 100% happy. Most of us, we have our personal challenges, emotional, social challenges, and some of them, they're even weighing down our lives. But let me remind you that God in his wisdom, he can also tell you like Daniel that go and take a rest, go and sleep. So we are not complaining. We are not blaming God for allowing Sami to sleep. But of course, there are, also, there are also other things that God can, can consider and he can say that in his wisdom, it is good for my servant to rest. Okay, the other verse, because I promised to read only three, it is verse number 12, where the Bible says that blessed is he who waits. Blessed it is he who waits. I only want to read that first part. You know, waiting here, it calls for patience. And patience also calls for perseverance. So in this journey of faith, you must learn to persevere. You must have the patience of the saints. You must sometimes choose to suffer, but you must wait. Because wasting, it is still trusting in the Lord. The problem with some Christians, when they are going home, heaven bound, some of us, we get tired on the way. We know the story of the Israelites. The reason why God decided to punish them by increasing the days, the years, when they were going home in Canaan, it's because of rebellion and unbelief. And some of us Christians here, we are already tired. We are already tired. And we have decided that it is better even to join the world it is better sometimes to associate with the world because you don't want to wait for the Lord. 
It is my prayer that even as we bury Sami, let the burial of Sami also be a statement in our lives so that we can make strong uh, covenants and renew our faith in the Lord and ask God, please give me the power or the strength to wait until that day. Praise the Lord again. The last verse, it is verse number two, where the Bible says, the same chapter number 12, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to the everlasting life, some to, the, to shame and everlasting contempt, those who are lying in the dust. These words were spoken by Jesus himself because it is the time that uh, Jesus was telling Daniel that uh, a time of trouble is coming. A time when things will be terrible. Life will be difficult. Things will be like you cannot even sometimes understand. And we are almost there because when you look around the world, Inflation is now biting. The social life, people are also fighting, killing each other. In the religious world, there is a lot of confusion. In the political world also, they are giving us empty promises. So we are living in difficult times, perilous days. And uh, Jesus told Daniel that uh, these days are coming, these terrible times. But let me assure you that Jesus is still in control. God is in control. Hallelujah. That is why he told Daniel that uh, a day is coming when even those who are in the dust shall arise. The first group will arise or will rise up and they will receive eternal life. But the rest of the team that will remain will be raised only to receive condemnation. So it is your choice, even as we bury Samuel, to choose where you want to, be, to belong. It is our prayer. You know the role of pastors, it is to encourage you, our members, that don't forget Jesus is coming again. We are in this world, we are in exile like Daniel. We need to stand firm we need not also to compromise, to be constant, because God is constant. So it is my prayer, even as we now come to the end of this session, that uh, now, as we take Sami to the resting place until that morning, let the grace of God be sufficient in our lives. And may the good Lord sustain Professor Mochoge in a special way. Mochoge is our friend, is a senior citizen, and we are with him. And I thank those friends that were able to come, the senior citizens that I saw you. It's good to be closer to your friend because at this age, even our strength is not as the time when we were young people. So I want us to pray, and I'm going to request that those of us who are here, we stand up and then I'm going to pray, and then the rest of the program will follow. Kindly let us stand as we pray. Pro, I can see you. I hope you ate something. Thank you.
there is a sense of finality when we bury our loved ones. When we lower their remains to their final resting place, there is always a sense of finality. And I've seen a tradition even in our community where sometimes people even have to do a night vigil to take care of the graves and many other things. But this afternoon, I just want us all to get from this place with this one assurance. Are you all listening to me? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? I would like us to get out of this place with this one assurance. You know, in the recent past, my wife and I were in Israel, and we entered the tomb of Jesus Christ. We took a photo whilst we were in there. I thought it's something to be proud of, pilgrimages. Whilst we are walking out, whilst we are walking out, I found it written right on our way out. Whom did you come to seek for in here? He is risen. He is risen. Praise God. And he is alive. Allow me to say this. The Bible in John chapter 3 verse 36 says this. He who has the son has life and not just life but life everlasting praise God that though in this life we may rest like this a time is coming when we shall rise to die no more finally as I conclude allow me to say this Isaiah the prophet has given us a text that I would like each one of us who is here this afternoon to have that text embedded in our hearts. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Isaiah the prophet has written to us a text that I would love each one of us to live with this afternoon. As we lay the remains of our brother to his final resting place, please have that text, put it in your hearts, let it give us hope. Isaiah 26 verse 19. This is what the Bible says. Your dead shall rise again. You all didn't hear me. Can I repeat that one more time? The Bible says, Your dead shall rise. And when the Bible says that, it gives us an assurance. And Christ says, When your dead shall live again, then he says, Together with my body, they shall arise. I pray to God that this may be the assurance that we shall have as we lower the casket that carries and bears the remains of our brother. That even as we do so, our hope will linger in our hearts. Marlene, Prof, and the rest of us who are here, our dead shall rise again. And let that remain upon our hearts this day and forevermore. We're going to pray and then head to the graveside. And as we do that, I would love us to sing songs. Many of us may remain here. A few of us will walk with the pallbearers to the graveside. Uh, the ministers, my colleagues who are here, and the family, and a few of us will go behind where we have the final resting place. The rest of us will remain behind and request the ministry of our sisters, the Msani ladies, where are you? We'll request that you remain here as you keep taking us through songs. A few of us will get to the final resting place. May I request all of us to be upstanding kindly. <clears throat> Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Eternal God, Heavenly Father, what would it have been if you ever sent your son Christ Jesus to die for our sake? What would it have been if he never lived amongst us, suffered, died, and rose again? What would it have been? Could we have borne the hope that we have today? Yes, yes, O oh Lord, our hearts are heavy today. Tears are going to roll down our cheeks. We are assured that you number every tear. 
that falls down our cheeks. Yes, when we shall lower the remains of our loved one today to his final resting place, our hearts will be heavy. But Heavenly Father, we stand with this assurance that you've given us this afternoon. That he who has the Son has everlasting life. It is the assurance that we have that our brother Sammy had you. Henceforth we stand with the assurance of Isaiah 26 verse 19. That our dead shall live again. And so Lord, in painful acceptance of what happened through our first parents. Today the remains of our brother shall go back to dust. And like a seed planted, yes, it shall go down corrupt. Our prayer is that it shall rise incorruptible. Yes, we know that it might go down mortal. Our prayer is that when it shall rise again, it shall bear life immortal. But until then, may that hope be born upon our hearts. The hearts of Prof, the heart of Malin, the brothers and the sisters that are here and the children that are here, this afternoon. May that hope be born in our hearts forevermore. That our dead shall rise again. And they shall live with you forevermore, never to part again. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet. At Jesus' feet, till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. I'm going to request the family to remain standing. Every one of us, please be seated. The pallbearers, please, you can come. My sisters from Sunny, please, you can come. My minister colleagues, Pastor Ferdinand and my senior pastor, we will follow the pallbearers from behind and the family will follow us. We'll have a few of us just, you'll, you'll pave way for us over there kindly. As we move towards that direction, our sisters will keep us in the singing mood. And we will request that kindly, because of the space that we have back there, just a few family members of you. My heart when I pause to remember a heart is Thank you. 
the side. Yeah. yeah, get out. Yeah, yeah. How about you? Yeah, I was old. So, yeah, I'm going to go. who are here, the emphasis that we've been making again and again is to the word of God. Allow me to read that word again, this word that Sam held so dear to this house. I have said it a few minutes ago, I'm going to repeat that again, that our dead shall rise again. And so this afternoon, rather this evening, in fulfillment of the word that God spoke from the scriptures, Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, he did say these words, the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. Today the remains of our brother return to the ground, as the Lord said. For he again finished by saying that out of it we were taken, from dust we were, from dust we shall return. Allow me to say these words. Those of us who have studied the original language, the Lord says He created from ex nihilo, from nothing, and from ex nihilo, from nothing, He shall recreate again. But even though we will become unto dust, from dust He shall bring life, this time round not unto life mortal, but unto life immortal. We shall be pressed. May that be the hope that we bear as we return in fulfillment of God's word the remains of our brother. Right here, some is guardian angels. Yeah. Let's repeat that again. Some is guardian angels will remain here until the trumpet is sound. 
service has been done, Father. You are the one who ordained that Lord Sami will be buried by these pastors and also this team of friends and relatives. We thank you because there is nothing before thee that it is by accident. We thank you, Lord, because we have evidence that, Lord, your hope and your promises are sure. Lord, with a lot of humility, we have laid the remains of Samuel to dust. You commanded that, Father, we came from dust and dust we shall return. But, Lord, we have done it in the blessed hope of the saints. And we thank you because of the promises that you committed, even through your servants. We know that even after we have buried Samuel, the pastor has said and it is confirmed in your words that Lord, you continue guarding the graves of your own people. Because you say that those who die in you, they even bring glory to your name. Father, now as we now move to the other part of the service to pray with the close family members in the house, we are still seeking for your face. We are seeking for your face to be lifted upon us. We are praying that your face will be shined upon us and your countenance. We pray for Professor once again and his children, and even the grandchildren and the other close relatives. Father, we thank you because you have appointed this place to be a resting place for your servants. Thank you for all everything that has been done, and we give honor and glory to you. Pray for the team from America, even as they will be planning to go back home where they live and work. May your grace also be with them. We thank you for the pastor who came with the team. We thank you for every person who was involved in this noble duty of planning to put the rest of Sammy's remains in the, in the grave. Lord, now we thank you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone. We shall move to the house. I know that we'll have a few of us enter into the house. We'll have a few sentiments made there, prayers, and then we will come back here. And we shall have a closure once we are done from here. The family will interact with those that came here to come back with them. May God bless each one of you. Shall we allow the family to move fast, please? 
Bueno, cañaba una vaca, vaca ruta.
Aku mau kurangkan lebih cik ko. Yang kau mau? Teman.
Oh my name, Jimmy, I don't know my
The pasta is going to pray for us. And I think I'm going to pray for us. Because I'm going to pray for us. I'm going to pray for us.
Sao, sao, sao? Mamãe, 
Fica só. É só. I guess people were direct. Yo 
Madri, Madre, 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 Madre,
Ata kira kau nak ditipu mereka betul ke? Yang kau buka dia sudah menang sah kau nak ditipu kau nak. Macam mana Isar? Biar mana biar mana saya kasih ini ya. Mesti saya nunggu. Guru atau tarap apa sahaja. Oh, Fina, I'm just kidding. Oh, Fina. 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 Oh,
Uh, let me say this, we want to pray first of all to bless this gentleman for the work they have done and then we shall come to this ceremony. Shall we pray? Loving Jesus, we are thankful for allowing us to have come this far. Our brothers have helped us to cover the house, the temporary house of our brother Sam. For the work they have done, we ask your blessings upon them. Thank you for their gesture, and we ask, dear Father, that thou mayst also bless the work of their hands. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Allow me to say this. As I said it earlier, the Bible says this in the book of Isaiah. Some people never know why we do this. But the Bible is very clear in the book of Isaiah that mankind is like unto grass. And the Bible says that the grass withers and the flower does what? Fades. But it finishes by saying the word of God stands forever. So when we lay the wreath, it is also in fulfillment of God's word. That we, like unto grass and like unto flowers, we shall fade. But God's word shall raise us one more time. So may God bless us this evening. We are going to lay the wreath, and after which we'll have a closing final prayer done from here by our Pastor Otwera. And we will go in the order of the family, just like they are seated. And we shall be the ones to close. My colleague and myself will be the ones to close. I want to believe every one of us has some rose, some flower, because we're gonna call us in this order. First we'll have Prof come. Let's have the red for Prof, please. will be followed by Marlin. Marlin, please. Thank you. We'll have Michelle, Tiffany. Michelle and Tiffany, please. Come together, come together, please. And then you face this direction. Hold it together. You can hold it together. Alright, darling, I'm going to call you again on behalf of Abigail, please. Come. 
That's for Abigail, the little girl. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, darling, please come. Plant it. Oh. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, let me have the brothers, please. Let me have the brothers. <coughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. The sisters in law, the sisters in law, are they here? Very good. The sisters in law. Thank you very much. I think I can see the aunties there. Is it the aunties? Please come. Uh, the group on the stage, just give us a minute. Thank you very much. Let's have the uncles, please. The uncles, are they here? All right, the cousins? The aunties, please come. All right, so we'll have the aunties. All right, let's have the team from the... Okay, that's the uncles, please. Okay, uncles, please. Uncles, cousins, are they here? The cousins? Please come. The cousins first. Cousins. Please plant it round. Make, 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 it, make it round, please. All the cousins, and you look in that direction. All of you, as you face that direction. Some of you can decide, please. Some of you, please come beside. Some of you come beside. We want to have the third last group, the group from the states, led by Pastor Ferdinand, please, put in the middle here. You face that direction. Thank you very much, the team from the States. Let's have all the nephews and the nieces come here. The nephews and nieces, please, please sit there. We'll have the friends, and then Pastor and myself will be the last one. All right, all the friends who have flower rules, please come. All right, Chef Ades, I can see you with one, please come. Uh, this is Mrs. Otuera and my wife. Thank you very much. The friends that are here, please. I am Tatupa Uwala Mwisho La Wachungaji. Tatupa Mwisho Kumaliza. Malize maana tukimaliza ndivyo hivyo kuna mmoja amesalia All right go ahead Sorry Thank you very much everyone never forget this The grass withers and the flower fades but the word of the Lord stands forever We believe that God's word shall raise our brother someday in the near future We will have the last prayer offered to us after which we shall go and mingle with the friends and the family that are there, those of us who have been taking a bite, we have a serving going on. We shall be free from now as we mingle with the family. Let's have the closing prayer. Gracious Father and God, what in heaven, 
We thank you because heaven is our final home. We thank you because you promised that you are going to make a new earth and a new heaven, Father. We thank you because you promised that, Father, you went to prepare a place for us. We have come to the end of this session, and Lord, we know that it has been a very sorrowful moment, and we are still in the process of accepting and healing, Father. We are requesting once again now, as we now come to the end and we leave this place, may you go with each one of us. Father, send us with your comfort, Father. <coughs> We pray once again that, Lord, this particular place that has been uh, allocated for your manservant to sleep until that day, you are the one who is a caretaker, Father. You don't slumber like us. We pray that the remains of your servant will be kept under this place until that morning when you are going to sound the trumpet and you shall call him out of this place. Yes. We pray that also you renew our hope because we need thee, Father. We are here as human beings, but we thank you for the strength that is, it is in us. Father, we pray for Daddy, the Professor Mochoge, once again. Now that he's leaving this place with the fact that the sun has been laid here, may you give him, Father, that hope that is beyond this grave. We pray for the rest of the family members who are here, and in particular for the widow. We pray that, Lord, you are going to strengthen our sister, even as she goes back home in U.S. May you go with her and give her courage and peace, even in the rest of our life. Thank you for answering our prayers, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. Amen. God bless you. Meetings will be done the other side. We can we can only mingle with the rest of the other side. We are the last people to leave the Hello. <laughs> 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 